Well, to get creatures running around the screen at this kind of speed, the programme would have to have used machine code. Fred took a look at some software which lets you produce animations like this, but without writing a line of code. This is called Movie Maker from a company with the rather strange name of Slippery Slug. Well, yes, OK, the shapes are rather chunky, but you can make them do more or less anything you like. Even so, there is a limit to what you can do on an 8-bit machine. In the end, the, ha the hardware forces you to compromise both the quality of the picture and the smoothness of movement. But just see what the 32-bit Amiga can do. Here we have a classroom. The professor moves across. And those words sink pleasingly into the sunset. Well, that's pretty snazzy for a do-it-yourself animation, but how is it produced? Well, the drawings were done using this package, Paint, which we demonstrated in the last series. The animation is handled by another package called Deluxe Video. As you may have guessed, there was in fact not one little man, but several. Here they all are, and you can see there are just a few differences there. The legs are in different positions, and at the end here, we've made him face towards us. Now, of course, I can make changes to that animation. I'll just get rid of this chap first. Pull that screen down. Come on, down you come, that's it. Right. Now, get shot of this little mini screen here. Now, this screen shows the so-called timelines of the action. There are seconds marked at the top up here. And these three lines control what happens. The first line here is the background, that's the classroom. And down here, there's the line about the professor, that's walk prof. He appears, he animates across the screen and at the bottom this is what happens to the words micro live they appear and eventually they move now let's change the action of that professor so we need to change the animation of his legs that's the rate at which they move and we also need to change the rate at which he moves across the screen so move those both up there that should make him a bit faster now I pull down a screen at the top here a menu and select play video right and that should get him cracking now there's a bit of a pause while the computer sorts out all those instructions obviously this is a demonstration so it's a relatively simple piece of animation but you could have lots of characters lots of different scenes you can even string them all together to make up a complicated story now where is he ah yes there's the classroom there's the prof and as you can see he moved a good deal faster than he did before and the rest of the scene is exactly the same well, that is animation of a sort, and it's quite an achievement for a home micro. But that's about it. If you want real, high-resolution, three-dimensional computer animation, then you'll have to look elsewhere. The right honourable gentleman, please shut up! The right honourable gentleman, please shut up! Well, I defy you to do that on your spectrum. She was a prize-winning piece by Keith Waters, a student at Middlesex Polytechnic. To get that sort of realism in their animations, graphic artists often start with a model. Keith started with this head from Spitting Image. In fact, you can see how he's divided it up into simple shapes, triangles, rectangles and squares, which can then be translated into numbers. This process, called digitising, is a means of turning real-world objects like this into a form that the computer can work on. Virgin Animations explains how it can be done. What I'm doing with the digitizer is to uh, input a stream of coordinates into the computer. The coordinates form the basis for a surface which we will be able to light and shade and treat like a normal surface. So it's very much like the first stage in carving something out of wood. Every time you press the button, you enter another point into the stream of coordinates. So by tracing around, pressing the button at regular points along the curve, you'll end up with a kind of approximation to a smooth curve. Now, this data is going to be fairly rough because there's no accurate way of kind of tracing round a curve. But what we can do is to come back and edit that later using uh, a special editing program, which we've written to allow us to smooth these things out and kind of finish it off and make it look all nice and smooth. The great secret of this system is that it can manipulate three-dimensional shapes in real time. The important thing about uh, animating on this system is that it allows you to use the, the buttons and dials over here to actually input to the animation. So having set the program running, I can kind of move my camera and my objects or anything else about in space just using these knobs. And I can actually see that happening. The moves can be stored in memory, smoothed and later edited if necessary. That's something that, that wasn't previously possible with kind of older computers and, and lesser forms of technology.